Hello everybody, welcome back. I just returned from Gamescom a couple of days ago. Bandai Namco were kind enough to invite me out to play Dark Souls 3 at Gamescom in Germany. And full disclosure, they also paid for my hotel accommodation and an exhibitor pass. However, I did pay for my own flights. Just before I jump into my impressions of Dark Souls 3, I'd like to really thank Bandai Namco for this amazing opportunity. I had an incredible time in Cologne and I'm very grateful for it. So, I've played hours and hours of the Dark Souls 3 demo, including scheduled hands-on time, a live Q&A and a presentation. The demo showcased an area called Wall of Lodleth, which was definitely an early game area. The boss at the end of it was called Dancer of the Frigid Valley, and it was a very cool boss fight. Not too challenging though, I actually ended up beating it on my second try, but that's quite normal for an early game boss. To help you understand how Dark Souls 3 felt to play, first I have to say that it does have elements of all the previous Souls games and even bring some stuff over from Bloodborne, like the intricate background scenery for example. But with all that being said, without a shred of doubt, I can safely tell you that the game feels like Dark Souls 1. If you have played the original Dark Souls extensively, then Dark Souls 3 will feel very familiar and natural in terms of controls, movement and gameplay. There are some significant additions though, the biggest and most obvious being sword arts. Each weapon in the demo had a unique move you could perform by pressing L2. The greatsword would do a huge uppercut that slammed enemies into the air. The scimitars would do a whirling spin attack that was great for taking out groups of enemies. The axe would initiate a self buff that knocked enemies backwards and increased your damage output. And the short sword would do a running stab attack. This new Sword Arts feature is basically a new way to enhance combat in Dark Souls 3, kind of similar to how transforming trick weapons added to combat in Bloodborne. There was a bow in the demo, I didn't get to test it, but it was shown in the presentation I saw and it is fast. You could move while aiming, you could roll and then fire a shot immediately afterwards. Bows have changed a lot and that's something I'm going to be keeping my eye on as more information is revealed. There was not any magic included in the demo by the way, but magic will absolutely be in the final game, don't worry about that. That was confirmed and this is a Souls game after all. Another new move players will have is a backstep jump attack. You'll remember from previous games that backstepping and pressing R1 does a normal running dash attack, but now backstepping and pressing R2 makes you do a jump attack. Essentially, what you can take away from this is that combat is built upon Dark Souls 1 foundations with added tweaks and abilities. Also, combat is now faster. It's confirmed to be quicker and more intense than all the previous Souls games, but obviously nowhere near as fast as Bloodborne. This includes the enemies by the way. They all attack and react faster, even the regular hollows. The AI definitely seemed a bit tougher this time. A lot of good things from Dark Souls 2 have been added, such as being able to cancel out of gestures by rolling, and you can also drink Estus on ladders. Players will now also have infinite use of a torch to light your path, uh, which was a mechanic that was present in Bloodborne. The best outcome for us would be if they took the best parts of all the previous games and then put them all together in this new installment, and it kind of seems like they might be doing that. Other than that though, the main thing is that combat is very similar to the original Dark Souls. Backsteps look the same, they gave you infinite poise, but we didn't think they gave you invincibility frames, which was weird. Uh, parrying and reposting is the same, even backstabs are the same. Now, something to mention with regards to that is that most of the enemies in the demo could be backstabbed, and in a lot of cases I ended up winning most fights just by chaining backstabs, which is gonna sound pretty familiar to a lot of people. That being said, the AI does have new ways of preventing backstab fishing. They are more intelligent. One of the knights, for example, kept smashing my face in with his shield every time I tried to run behind him, but I think there is a very real possibility that many of the same problems Dark Souls had could transfer over to Dark Souls 3. By this, I do not mean dead angles, toggle escapes, reverse rolling, and all that stuff. We tested all that and we couldn't do them at all. What I mean is core mechanics, things like instant backstabs and potentially even the return of infinite stun locks. Obviously this is just a demo, so not everything is certain at this point, but I don't see why you guys shouldn't be aware that it's at least a possibility. Now in terms of level design, the environment was crafted together extremely tightly and vertically, like Bloodborne and Dark Souls 1. The area looped back around on itself, there was ladders, unlockable gates and shortcuts and sprinting across rooftops, all that good stuff that we've come to expect from a game led by Miyazaki. Pretty much right at the start there was a huge awesome looking dragon that flew over and roasted everything. And one thing to note now is that effects like fire and ash now look awesome. 
Fire seems a lot more real now, since it actually lingers and stays on what it touches, including the player model. You could find weapons scattered around the level, you could find consumables, like green blossom, throwing knives, charcoal pine resin and fire bombs. A cool thing to note about buffs though, is that if you have a dual wielding weapon like the legion scimitars, then if you buff one of them with the charcoal pine resin, then they actually both get buffed with flame, which was quite convenient. Estus was fast as well. When you actually drank it, the healing was instantaneous, but there was a delay before and after you drank it, and you couldn't move while you were healing. Death mechanics weren't really a thing in the demo. What I mean by that is, although the bloodstain system was still there, so when you die you drop a bloodstain and you have to return to that area to pick up your souls, the same stuff, there was no punishment other than that though when you died. Like Dark Souls 2 would gradually lower your health as you slowly hollowed. So either there is no health punishment for death or no hollowing system, or more likely they just haven't finalised one yet. That's the same with many things actually. I asked about Poise for example and he literally said to me they would be tweaking and changing mechanics like that up until release day. To briefly touch on performance, I would say overall the game ran pretty well and looked quite good. The lighting worked well, the torch lit up dark areas well like it was supposed to, the particle effects all looked great. One thing I would point out though is that the frame rate did struggle at times. The frame rate is confirmed to be running at 30 frames per second, but there were some stutters every now and then. But to be honest, that means nothing because this was an early alpha build of the game, so obviously not everything is complete yet. The boss of the demo was called Dancer of the Frigid Valley, as I mentioned earlier, and it's a badass looking boss. It was located in a cathedral at the end of the level, and for the first stage of the fight it used this huge flaming curved blade, which, when it strikes the ground and pillars around you, it actually sets them on fire, which really limited my mobility during the fight. Once you got the boss to around 50% HP, or half health, it pulled out an ash scimitar, and this is where the fight gets fairly challenging. It has a couple of one-shot attacks, a grab attack, and this huge spin attack which was absolutely devastating as you can see here. If you got caught in that, you'd get absolutely wrecked. It is a cool boss, but if you're a Souls veteran and play carefully, it won't be too much trouble at all. I'm really grateful I had the opportunity to play the game early because I saw the gameplay trailer and wasn't actually too excited. The trailer made the game look like Demon Souls to me for some reason and it gave me a weird vibe honestly, but that all changed as soon as I picked up the controller. All I'm saying is if you're on the fence right now, which is understandable because there's not that much to see yet, wait until more information is released or an, at least until there's a public beta or something because I was shocked at how comfortable I felt playing Dark Souls 3 after just a few minutes. I'm somebody who absolutely loved Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2 and Bloodborne and it was so nice to recognise certain things from all those games returning in Dark Souls 3. So Dark Souls 3 is estimated to have an early 2016 release date and it's confirmed to be on all the current gen consoles. So it'll be on PS4, Xbox One and of course on PC. There are many other community members who have had a chance to play Dark Souls 3 early as well and they will have all had different experiences to me so if you'd like to check out their perspectives I'll link all their videos right here. Thank you so much everyone for your support, it's what allowed me to go to Germany with Bandai Namco and I appreciate it so much. I hope this video was helpful in giving you a taste of what Dark Souls 3 will be bringing to the table. Thanks for watching lads and ladies, I'll see you in the next video.